Hi, it's Dr. Karn. If you're anything like me, you were brought up with maybe some old time religion that talked about Jesus Christ being this great figure, but it was something separate from us. And now you're hearing all this talk about Christ consciousness. I wanna unpack it for you and explain to you what Christ consciousness really is and how to activate it. Let's dive in. So being raised in the church, if you were raised in the Christian faith like me, or if you've just maybe heard it in society, we've got Christ as this beautiful being that taught all these teachings of God, yet He was separate from us, right? He was someone that we had to call to. But now you're hearing about Christ consciousness, and it's something that you can actually activate to further accelerate and amplify your spiritual experience here on this planet, because my friend, the frequency of Christ consciousness right now is amplifying weekly, and I want you to be able to connect to it. So the idea the idea of Christ consciousness is really what Jesus embodied when he was here on earth and what he still embodies in his spiritual form, which is the ultimate connection of source going through us, the ultimate connection of the divine. And really it's the ultimate connection with your divine eternal power that is always running through you. So this is an evolution that somehow we have to keep pleading for and asking for forgiveness and, and happiness and joy and for good things to happen. And as we evolve in our spiritual awakening, we realize we can actually activate that in any moment by calling that Christ energy through us. We have, as your birthright, you have access to happiness, joy, and love in any moment that you want it. And when you start to realize that you can activate that in a moment, you don't have to go through a conduit or ask for forgiveness or somehow find yourself moving up the religious scale, that is when you start to activate this consciousness. And what it does in turn is all the other souls who are waking up, we start to form this collective Christ consciousness on the planet. And that is an extraordinarily powerful thing. So welcome to what is becoming the new earth, because this is the reason behind it. So maybe you're listening to me and you're like, yeah, but I'm not a Christian. Like, can I really connect to that? So Christ, as I see it, he was, he was and is an ascended master. So was Buddha. And so were so many other of these spirits spiritual teachings. And this Christ consciousness, it's the word, the language that we have put on it. It really is just this deeper connection to this higher level of consciousness. Now, let me break it down in terms of David Hawkins' research about the levels of emotional consciousness as humans that we experience. Now, David Hawkins did like 30 years of, of research on the human body and identified a certain number with each levels of consciousness, how it helped you to emanate, how it helped you to feel in the world. From a number that went up to about 700 of pure enlightenment down to a 20, which was the place of shame and guilt and fear, right? So they say when Jesus was here, he emanated up around a 2000, that state of bliss. He had such a pure energy of the knowledge of wholeness, the knowledge of happiness, the state of being that was innate, that you deserved, that it was your birthright to be happiness, that he embodied this state of health, state of well being, state of high consciousness, that just by being his presence, people were healed. Just by being in his frequency, you were healed because your frequency, if you were ready, to activate it would raise itself to match his frequency and up at a 2000 there's no illness there's no disease there's no unhappiness there's no despair there's just feelings of bliss and that is that connection to christ consciousness which is available to you so looking at that scale of consciousness as you're wanting to work yourself up so what we're wanting to do to get to this is just to keep your frequency high we want to get your vibration high where we're always aiming for these moments of enlightenment these moments of bliss like that moment when you were sitting Maybe it was at the beach watching the sunset. Maybe you were watching your child play and laugh. Maybe you took that hike to the top of the mountain and the sun was coming up at just that moment or any moment where you felt this sense where you forgot everything that was wrong with life or you forgot how ashamed you were about your divorce or how much you regretted losing money in that last investment. None of that mattered. You had enough gut chills as I'm talking about this, which is a sign that this is true. In that moment, as you felt that feeling of pure lit bliss, that is you reaching towards that feeling of love, peace, and joy, and enlightenment, which brings you up to a vibrational essence of about 500. And if you can reach even more towards that, you can get towards a thousand. And where Jesus is, that's a 2000. That moment when you feel pure ecstasy about life, you feel pure connection. And the, really the word is you're feeling a oneness with all that is around you because we are all one. And this is what Christ taught us, that Christ energy running through us. It's not him holding it on his own. He constantly said, like he, he actually never said, I'm the only son of God. He actually said, we are all sons of God. We are all connected. He actually never asked us to worship him. He wanted us all to be collaborative. He wanted us to all feel a sense of oneness, not only with each other, but with 
God incarnate on this planet with, with nature, with all the things and the beings and the celestial grandness, the majesty that we have around us. When you are in that moment of pure appreciation, by the way, appreciation is the same as love. It resonates at a three, four, five hundred. You're feeling that Christ consciousness energy flow through you. And so when you're in those states of bliss, you're in a state that will activate your immune system at a higher level. You are able to then ask for the healing that you desire. You're able then to ask to release, to forgive, to release any of those feelings of shame. Anything that does not match that frequency in that moment falls away. And that is your birthright state of consciousness. So this state of consciousness that I'm talking about is the innate within you. It's what you were born knowing to be true. Think about a baby, okay? Because you can't probably remember, some of you do, but you likely don't remember how you felt when you came into this earth. If you watch a baby, a baby knows to reach for what it desires to be true. A baby is, sits in wild wonder because everything is new, right? A baby, when something is not matched, what it really desires, what does it do? It throws a fit. It's like, I don't want any of that. All of those feelings that are running through us is that consciousness coming through you. What feels good? What feels like joy? What feels like happiness, excitement, curiosity? That is that natural state of consciousness that connects you to Christ, that connects you to source, that was innately put in you, running through you, the running through your spirit body, your mind body. What happens to it though, is as we hit about the age of six or seven, we get desensitized to it. We are in a, we've been raised in a culture, specifically the Western culture. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Those of us that were raised under this um, paradigm of fear and control, the generations have been afraid of how powerful people are. So the church specifically, society, there are a lot of political systems that have really wanted to be in control of who we are. So from a really young age, you're taught that maybe your imaginary friend, which very likely is a spirit that you actually can see because you're born seeing, isn't real that you really can't maybe talk to God on your own. You might need to go through a pastor. Again, disempowering. That you can't trust the way you feel, that others want to make decisions for you. Again, disempowering. So all of those disempowering experiences, um, you're taught to be competitive with your friends. You're taught to be ashamed when you do things wrong. Each one of those things is a chipping away of this consciousness, this Christ consciousness that was activated in you as a child, and it gets lessened. Your light gets dimmed down. So if you are on the path to spiritual awakening, you're are moving more towards that reconnection. And it's actually a remembering of what you were born knowing, this reconnection with the divine within you that says you're always perfect. You're always loved. Move towards what feels good to you. Move away what feels bad to you. You don't need anyone else to give you power or validation. You have that running through you as you check with your own soul what feels good and what feels bad. That is Christ consciousness flowing through you to connect you to your spiritual path on a very high frequency that is is always reaching for bliss, that is always reaching for enlightenment, that is always reaching for moments in an entire life that feels super amazing. Now I'm going to talk for a moment about this collective Christ consciousness and how insanely exciting it is that you're alive right now. But before I do, I'd love for you to like and subscribe to this video if this is material that you connect with, because I'd love for you to know when more videos on topics like this come out. Back to the video. So congratulations on being alive right now. There is no mistake that you are here watching this today. There is no mistake that you are on this planet right now as an awakening being or as an awakened being because what you're waking up to is this Christ consciousness flowing through you. And I have a bombshell thing that I'm gonna tell you. The second coming of Christ that's mentioned in the Bible in my belief system is happening right now. I honestly do not believe that Christ is gonna show up in some grand physical form and take everyone up that's deserving and leave everyone behind that's not. I believe that that was all a metaphor and what they were really trying to teach in the text was that Christ consciousness is gonna be reawakening, being remembered through each one of us. And that this second coming of Christ is what we're actually going through right now because it's not really the Christ, the physical form of this man that we're all picturing, but it's an energy. It's an energy of love and it's an energy that's being awakened in us. It's this second coming, the second knowing as we're all being reborn, reawakened in to our innate state of consciousness, which is the Christ consciousness flowing through you. And because you are here, you've chosen to be here in a moment when this is being reawakened, you've chosen to be here as we're making this massive, although it's challenging, although it's bringing up all that dark energy, because my friend, for the light to come, the darkness has to be purged. And I know it's challenging. I know it's difficult. In no way do I mean to suggest that everything is butterflies and rainbows because the darkness also brings up some of that, that 
polarity that's gonna help us to grow as we're all waking up further, as we're all more refining who we are as spiritual beings. So even through the challenge of this transformation we're going through individually and collectively, you're here for a very specific reason that's not only to wake up Christ consciousness through you, but in the second coming as we're going into the new earth. If you really like this kind of leading edge information, I wanna offer you a free masterclass that you can join, sign up for in the link below. It's a masterclass about activating this rebel soul inside of you because what we're doing is we're rebelling against all of these old paradigms and we're going towards a new earth and I would love for you to be a part of my tribe. So click the link below and I'll see you there.